So today I thought I'd discuss a little bit about my religious upbringing. Those who don't know me, my name is Nathan Wilson. I'm a spiritual teacher, Gnostic priest, and the creator of Spiritual Level of Being. Now, growing up I had a Protestant background. My nana was a foundation member of her church. She was originally Catholic, converted to Protestantism when she married my pop way before I was born. My mum wasn't religious, then became religious, a little bit crazy, and then left the religion, and I eventually became Gnostic, which is why you see me here today. My nana didn't like that at first, she thought I was demon-possessed, obviously, and then later on had a understanding that I have a great understanding of Christianity that she does, and now she leaves me alone. But we love each other. So, let's continue. Now, I was sent to Sunday schools, to Bible camps. I would rebel at these Bible camps as well as I felt like I was placed there so my mum could go off and drink. Now, she was oddly religious too, as the church that I was sent to, that she wanted to go to, was a bit weird. I used to enjoy my nana's church, though I would also rebel there to try and play the cool kid, and also because I felt like religion was pushed on me too, and I didn't agree with the concept of what other Christians believed, as I felt like I had my own understanding, as all Christians do. Now, for instance, in this Sunday school as a youngster about 10 or 11 years old. I said that I was the son of the devil because the Sunday school lady said that my pets would go to hell because they can't pray to God and only humans can go there. And so I was angry by this and said that I can't worship a God like this. My God is loving, so I must be the son of the devil then if that's not God. And she grew angry and kicked me out. My nana, being the foundation member, being one of them, and said, why did I do this? And I told her why, and she said that this lady shouldn't have said that, and neither should I. So I was allowed back in, but I'd play up a lot. Now, I would do this at the camps I was sent to. I remember we went swimming. I shouted out shark, as I was hoping we'd all get sent home. So that way, my mum would have to deal with me. Now, that obviously didn't work, and it was a weird group, and people would swear at this camp too, and it was, it was a weird camp. So I got called dickhead there as well. And some teachers loved me as well. Now, I had my moments. I even tried to start a church gang. <laughs> Stupid shit. I was a bit of an odd kid, ADD and Asperger's. Now I know how to deal with it. I study a lot, I read, I meditate. This helps. Now, also my upbringing sucked. So we're not gonna get too much into that. This is about this religious side of things and the churches I went to. Now, I would also play scenes in the church to dress up like a Roman soldier and shout out next, <laughs> next in line basically, stuff like this, or to reenact the fall of Jericho. Now, the Catholic schools I went to, the teachers didn't like me there. They were very cruel. I was placed into a room, held there for a whole semester because I played up. Now, I did try to burn down the school. Some things I didn't actually do. Now, the reason I tried to burn it down is because the teacher told all my friends and all the students to hang out with me because I had Asperger's and ADD. And that's because I said that I didn't like her saint, which was Mother Teresa. I said that she enjoyed the suffering of others. So she wouldn't let the patients of hers have certain medications that she in turn did take when she was sick. She would make them walk up the stairs when she in turn would take the escalator. So I said this as a child, around a year five, and she hated me for it. So she said that I was stealing from her and would tell other students that I was weird. And so I tried to burn down the school. It wasn't the best decision. So I rebelled a lot. Now, growing up at these schools as well, I seen a lot of concept against them and us. So those who were believers and those who were not believers. I see this a lot in churches too. Recently, I went to a church and there was a minister said that we have to be willing to defend the faith and attack others who attack the Bible, but try to use peace if we can first, but we be willing to defend at all costs and attack those who are just non-agreeable. And I'm thinking, why would you say such a thing? Now, I've seen this YouTuber's channel, he's also a YouTuber priest, talking about abominations and this being the politicians of the world and very much almost American. So this was a bit odd. I've seen other churches too scream out the mark of the beast and how the CV, without getting censored, the choo-choos were the mark of the beast. And that philosophy 
even got me in trouble somewhat because I started hating people in charge as well. Not so much the same belief as them, but I started seeing that they must be rebellious against God, etc. So I tried being a Christian again. I was baptised at 18, then later I was a friend. And during this time I was baptised with the belief that I'm going to be a Gnostic now. I'm going to leave behind this old concept and begin a new life. I knew I was going to leave this church behind because I had nothing more to teach me. They could only teach me so much. I originally went to this other church because of I wanted the ideas more more of the understanding, I should say, sorry. The understanding of what certain texts meant, such as good fruits, that sort of stuff. Symbolic meanings, and I thought they might be able to teach me some stuff and redraft my memory as I left Christianity at that point and gave it a go again. Now I did try with Christianity growing up as a kid. But it was always difficult to keep it, as I've seen moral questioning problems, stuff like that. Also, the whole idea of fear and hell, jealousy, this didn't agree with me. Like, how could a God do this? No. So Gnosticism really attracted me because of this, which I would find later on my years, not until much later. Now, I heard of some text that were Gnostic, but I didn't know they were Gnostic. Now, there's not much about Gnosticism, because people at B, powers of B, if you will, don't want you to know this stuff. It's because it makes people too intelligent. They don't want the whole civilization to wake up. It'd be problematic. Now, this being said, simple texts aren't going to do this. It's going to take us working together, which the Nagamadi, the Gnostic text, open doors towards, as it teaches you to engage with the spirit within. Now, it brought me to meditation, back to meditation, as I was a weird kid growing up with ADD and Asperger's. I'd meditate as well, but I didn't understand I was meditating. I felt like I'd been doing this before and I wanted to do it again, but I couldn't understand what that urge was. But I found out I was doing something, so I let it go because I thought, <laughs> that's work. I don't want to be doing work. I thought that was just me doing my own thing, being lost in imagination. But I didn't understand that I was meditating. So I loved history as well. And because of this history and also me looking into the religious history, later on this would help me with my research with Gnosticism. Now, growing up as well, I seen the problems with this mindset of fear and hell. I've seen the problems with the end of the world and why would Christians want to bring about an ending of all life? So I see this whole religion as a way of escaping reality instead of confronting it and creating reality. So again, this is what brought me into Gnosticism, what made it more attractive. I've seen that the mainstream Christians of the day belong to those of which would persecute the Gnostics, those who killed the Gnostics in the millions. I came to know that the Gnostic texts were older, which again led me to Gnosticism, and I haven't looked back. Now, in some ways, I was Gnostic even as a kid. I just didn't understand it. I didn't know. So I was always driven for knowledge, wanting to know. And some stages, I would even try to block out my reality with drugs and alcohol, just because... I thought it was weird to know too much, that it was no point. None of those around me were interested in pursuit of anything to do with history or anything to do with spiritual nature. But in the end, I found this path years later. Now, I was still young then, so thankfully I found it now. I'm now turning 34, so I've had a good couple of years with Gnosticism that helped me engage with the spirit, that left me to find what I was thirsting for, to fill that empty void. That, what Christianity couldn't do for me. Now, when I was first brought to Gnosticism, I was in a dark place by myself, and this is where I found it by myself. Now, enlightenment doesn't always have to be with suffering involved. Sometimes it can be blissful. It's just that my awakening was through suffering. Having a shitty upbringing, having a religion forced upon me. Now, many of those who have a religious upbringing rebel against their parents' religions because it was forced on them. 
Now, because of this being forced on me, being forced to study Christianity, this helped me have a deeper understanding. But because I want to have a deeper understanding of more than that, I was really shut down. My family in turn would use Asperger's against me, that you have weird hobbies. You just need the Bible. Now, this is horrible advice, but this wasn't my nana's fault or my mum's fault so much. It's because the religion was pushed onto them. My nana was raised by nuns. Her family were neglectful. My nana is a superhero, by the way. She's beautiful. She's helped me through a lot and helped my family through a lot. She's the glue in the family. But she had a very strong religious upbringing. The nuns were cruel to her. So she thought that I, in turn, was influenced by the devil until I sat down with her and communicate with her and explain what Gnosticism is and how that her version of Christianity wouldn't have even began, which is Protestantism, without Gnosticism and how that the Catholic Church that she was raised by would kill the Gnostics in the ancient era and how certain texts in the Bible were immoral. And she would agree with me later. But to a point that some teachings were immoral and that some words are written by man. At first she believed that everything came from God and that everything in the Bible is perfectly okay, which is problematic. Now, growing up at different churches, I also seen the mentality of them against us, the believers versus the non-believers. The last church I went to, the preacher actually said out in public that we have to be willing to attack those who attack the Bible, but be willing to use the Bible first, because he's seen me doing this. <laughs> but... I actually went up to that preacher and I actually presented him to a Greek text and an English text and I pointed out mistranslations and he said, I have to go pray on this. He didn't know how to respond. His second in command completely walked away from the conversation. Now, Christians aren't told about mistranslations. They're not told about different Christian beliefs in the ancient era. Now, I've seen Christians present to me after telling them that there were texts that were burnt and they said that God must have wanted this, that God chose that there's only certain texts in the Bible. And I said, no, man did. Now, many Christians had the belief that God created the Bible, but they don't understand that it takes a man to dab the pen and ink. Now, I see this mentality of us against them specifically growing up as well. I would see Catholics fight Orthodox and Catholics fight Protestants. Now, all of them would all call each other the devil worshippers or heretics. This is the same shit they were doing in the ancient past when they were killing the Gnostics. This is the Orthodox and Catholics I'm speaking about, as Protestants didn't begin then. They became around, well, they began in the 1500s. But they would later persecute Gnostics too, though without Gnosticism, Protestantism would not have began. So this whole mentality of us against them, this is problematic. This is within all the Abrahamic faiths, which I've seen a problem with it. I would question why do Muslims, Jews and Christians all kill each other if they all worship the same God. I couldn't concept this as a kid. So now having a deeper understanding, I understand why. They worship Yahweh, a war God. Arguably Allah is not quite Yahweh. Allah is a mixture of El and Yahweh, as the word Allah comes from the word El or Ella. So Christians and Muslims and Jews don't understand how religion has changed and how all religions change and how this is not unique to this change. So they fight amongst themselves because of their own understandings of God, their own understanding of what the religious texts say. So their understanding of what God wants, which causes most of the wars on this planet. Now, my nana and mum, being extremely religious, didn't like me reading certain things. They wouldn't want me reading Harry Potter, let alone to see the TV show. I actually was told to make an essay on it, and they pulled me out of the English class because they got wind of it. Now, I was also told off for reading Evolution, but I would have none of that. I would say, I'm reading this. It's also mandatory, so no, you can't pull me out of this one. So I enjoyed that. I also loved studying history. They did not like me studying other religions, but I had my own way, and I did. They also were more... I would say, dominant when it came to what I would watch compared to what I would read. So Christians have this problem of what they hear from their church is evil. They're all going to pick up on it and think that it's evil. So without doing their own independent research in most cases, 
which was originally done with Harry Potter, and now a lot of Christians like Harry Potter. But because a few bad apples would say that it was complete evil, a few Christians would follow suit and burn books, as is nothing new, as they were doing in the medieval times and even in the 2nd and 3rd century. So, yeah, religion. But, long story short, Evolution was also problematic, as it denies the creation story of Adam and Eve, and my nana would question me, you don't believe that we came from monkeys, and I would explain to her, that's not how quite evolution works. So, she would leave me alone, as most Christians won't engage with a conversation that makes them feel uncomfortable about their beliefs. Anything that contradicts their beliefs is going to be an uncomfortable situation for them. As it's being human, now... I loved history, which in turn also led me to Gnosticism, as the Gnostics of old loved history, many of which were historians, were scientists, were healers, doctors, mathematicians and philosophers. Now, another thing I wasn't allowed to learn was language. Not because my mum was racist and she didn't want me to learn anything other than English, it was because the Christian church she went to didn't want people to learn the original language of the Bible. So... They only wanted you to read it in English. And because of that, she had that brainwashing, though she would leave that behind. Now, again, Christians don't like you reading the original text. If it's good enough in English, it's good enough for them. It's good enough for God. So, again, the mentality of not knowing too much, to have a limited knowledge, this was problematic, especially for me, being one who was thirsty for knowledge, Thirsty to know something. Now, being kids, I say we're all born Gnostic. We all want to know. I want to know this, I want to know this. The pursuit of knowledge. So, I was energetic. I was a troublesome kid because of my upbringing. And I wanted to learn. I wanted to better myself. But because I was pushed away from this concept, I would rebel. And because of this, I would be in trouble for a long time throughout my life. I would constantly not know myself. And it wasn't until my later years that I had the rebirth of self, that I discovered the spirit within, that I would actually change. And this is the problem. Education is really key. To thrive is to be encouraged to thrive by your parents as well. So you can still do this by yourself. And that's for sure. Especially when you get older. You're not responsible for your programming as a kid, but you are as an adult. Now, growing up, being Christian... I would see abuse amongst women. I would see many women being abused by their husbands and while at church, told not to leave their husbands because God hates divorce, to work on their relationship, to be good Christians and to bring their husband to Christianity or to make him a better Christian. Now, this in turn is control. My mum in turn was told to do the same with her abusive partners, which she should have left beforehand. But... Christianity has this idea to control the people as women are property. This is problematic, and I knew this was problematic. And I would hope my mum would leave, and I'll tell her to be you. But I was a child. But this is what's important, is to be yourself, to love yourself, and to not tolerate disrespect towards yourself, to leave those situations behind, to heal, not to deny yourself, or to be a sheep but to have your own mind and your own say. Thanks for bearing with me with my little freestyle chat. I hope you all have a lovely day, a lovely night. Connect to one mind and soul. Namaste.